In this video, we show you how to configure an IO Link master port with a Modbus capable PLC to use device validation and data storage. By activating this function, the IO Link device is automatically checked and parameterized by the IO Link master. We use the same setup as for the How To IO Link integration video. The IO Link sensor is already connected to port number one of the IO Link master, which is connected to the controller via Modbus. As the programming software shows, the current sensor data is transferred to the controller. If you have any questions up to this point, please have a look at the I.O. Link integration video. To configure the port, we first have to log out and select our Modbus TCP slave, which is our I.O. Link master AL1940. We select the Modbus slave channel and add a new channel to write parameter to the master. In order to do this, we need to configure the channel first. The name is optional and free to choose. Since we want to change the parameters of the IO link master, we select write multiple register as access type. The trigger and the cycle time are preset values and can be used this way. To find out the correct register and the required length for writing all necessary parameters, we need the device manual of the IO link master. We go to the IFM homepage and navigate to the online datasheet of the IO Link Master AL1940. In the download section, you can find the device manual. We open it and navigate to the Modbus TCP section and select Set IO Link Ports. Then go to the configuration area. Here we can see that the register for the configuration of port number one starts with 9000. Select the mapping for this port because this is where our IO link sensor is connected to. Let's take a closer look at the mapping table for the port configuration. As we have seen in the configuration area, the register for the configuration of port number one starts with 9000. If we now transfer this to our mapping table, it looks like this. A total of six words are available for the configuration, which can be addressed with the register shown here. Back to the configuration of our new Modbus channel. We now select register 9000 with a total length of six words as address for the write process. Before we start parameterizing the port in the I.O. mapping, we log in and check that the settings are OK. Green circles appear on the left side, which means that everything is OK and we can continue. Back to the mapping table for the port configuration, we look at the parameter we have to change. To use the device validation and data storage, we must set the port mode, validation ID, vendor ID, and device ID. We start with the setting of the port mode. For this, we look at the legend under the mapping table for the port configuration in the device manual. The port can be deactivated, used as digital input or output, or even set to IO link functionality. To use port one as IO link port, we have to write the value three to the referring register address. The next parameter to be set is the validation ID. To explain the five options available, let's look at another excerpt from the IO link master device manual. The first option, no check and clear, allows any I.O. link device to be connected to the port and read. This means that there is no device check and no data storage. The next two options, type compatible device, can be used to check that the correct sensor is connected. This can be done with the new 1.1 standard and even with the first I.O. link standard 1.0. Only the device type is checked without any kind of data storage. The validation check for the new I.O. link standard. 1.1 can be extended by the data storage options, restore, or backup and restore. The restore function saves a parameter set once and automatically transfers it to a new device with factory settings. The backup and restore function also saves any parameter changes made in the meantime. As soon as a new device with factory settings is connected, the saved parameter set is transmitted. For this demonstration, we choose the backup and restore function. To activate the function, we have to write the numerical value 3 in register 9001. 
Before we go on, we change both parameters and codes. In the I.O. mapping of our new created Modbus channel, we select the second byte of the register address 9000 to set the port mode. The same procedure is done for the first byte of the register address 9001, where the validation ID can be set. The decimal value 3 is entered here in binary form. If the values are written to the controller and the drop down views are folded together again, we can see their current values. Since the entire word is read out in this view, register 9000 does not show 3 but 768 as the decimal value. Finally, we need to change the vendor and device ID for port 1. These information can be found in the IODD PDF of the PN2093 pressure sensor we use. On the IFM homepage, the search function takes us directly to the online datasheet for the sensor. In the downloads area, we scroll down and select the IODD PDF. On the first page, you will find the vendor ID 310 for IFM and the device ID 462 for the PN2093 pressure sensor. As we can see from the mapping table, the whole word is used in both cases. Therefore, we can enter the values directly in decimal format in the prepared values column and then transfer them to the controller. As the mapping table shows, there are a total of three bytes reserved for the device ID. In our case, with a value of 462 for the device ID, the two bytes in register address 9004 are more than enough. If a device ID is used for which two bytes are not sufficient, the first byte of address 9003 must also be used. Port 1 is now fully configured. Now let's look at the effects of this configuration. First, we check the master's device validation. If the correct sensor is connected, as shown here, the corresponding status LED of the port will light up continuously in green. Now we unplug the M12 connector and plug in another sensor. If an incorrect device with a different vendor or device ID is used, this will be recognized by the master. The process values will not be read out and the status LED will change to red. Only when we reconnect the correct pressure sensor does the LED color of port number one change back to green. The master accepts the wired sensor and reads out the process values. Now let's move on to the parameter storage function. As we can see, the current pressure value is displayed in green. This parameter set with a green display is stored in the IO link master due to the backup and restore function. We disconnect the sensor and connect it to a separate power supply without connection to the master or the controller. To restore the factory settings, we use the push buttons of the device. As we can see, the sensor display is red by default. Now we reconnect this sensor to the IO link port of the master that we have configured and see what happens. The master recognizes that it is a factory set device and overwrites the saved parameter set. After the successful transfer, the sensor display changes to green. The new pressure sensor is now parameterized in the same way as the previous device. It is important to note that the restore function only works if the connected sensor has the factory settings. Otherwise, the current parameter settings of the connected sensor will be stored in the port, which corresponds to the backup function. Thank you for watching. See you next time.